My father was born in the suburbs of New York on Long Island. And as many young boys are, he was very interested in the local sports teams. His favorite sport was baseball, so it's no coincidence that he grew up to be a New York Yankee fan. And then when I was born, I was brought up to be a Yankee fan as well. We watch a countless number of Yankee games. We have about 40 autographed photos of Yankee legends from nearly every generation. And I loved learning everything I could about my favorite team growing up. The Yankees are known for having such a rich and successful history, legendary players, and some of the greatest teams ever assembled. But perhaps the greatest of all their teams was in 1927. The 1927 New York Yankees had such a dominating, had such a dominating year that very few teams have even come close to their accomplishments. The individual players and the team as a whole are held as the gold standard to which any player or team can only hope to be compared to. I'm going to show you what made them so great that year by highlighting both their team, team achieve, achievements and individual players' achievements. Today, I would like to highlight, spotlight for you, the, dom the dominance of the 1927 New York Yankees team. First, I'm going to start with some team records that they were able to accomplish. According, according to MontgomeryCollege.edu, the 1927 Yankees made numerous American League records that year, like having the most wins with 110 and boasting the highest winning margin. They won the American League by a record 19 games, and they became the first AL team to sweep the, sweep the World Series, being the Pittsburgh Pirates in four straight games. As you can see here, uh, their record, uh, they had 110 wins and only 44 losses, while second place had 91 wins. That's 19 games back. And also, another thing to point out, is the runs scored per game. They scored over six runs per game, whereas the next closest team was nearly a run behind them. And same thing with the runs allowed. They almost had a, uh, a one run advantage every single game. They were able to do this with some of the most productive hitting and efficient pitching the sport has ever seen. According to BaseballReference.com, Yankees had the most hits, the most triples, and the highest batting average of any team in the American League that year. However, the most lopsided stat of all is that they hit 158 home runs, and the next closest team only had 56. They had, a they had more than 100 more home runs than the next closest team in the American League hence their nickname, the Bronx Bombers. Next, I would like to highlight some of the individual players on the team. The 1927 Yankees team consisted of some of the greatest players of all time. The two most well-known players are the ones who go by Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Let's start with Babe Ruth, the Sultan of Swat, the King of Crash, the <laughs> Colossus of Club. <laughs> Babe Ruth had a legendary season in 1927. He set the record for most home runs of the season with 60. 60. That's more than any other team in the American League. Uh, his record stood for 34 years until it was broken by Roger Maris, who hit 61 home runs in 1961. However, according to AmericasLibrary.gov, fans of Babe Ruth argue that Maris hadn't really broken the Babe's record at all. When Ruth hit his 60 home runs in 1927, the baseball season had only 154 games in it. Maris had made his record in 162 games. The only other people to have surpassed Ruth's record in 1927 are Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, and Mark McGuire, all of whom have been linked to performance enhancing drugs. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other uh, well known guy on the 1927 Yankees was Lou Gehrig. Uh, he is most well known for three things. First, his fielding abilities. According to baseballwomens.com, he had a 992 fielding average, which means he committed an error less than 1% of the time, which as a first baseman is unheard of. He was also known for his power at the plate. During the 1927 season, Luke Gehrig had uh, 175 runs batted in, which was the most out of any player in the entire league, including Babe Ruth. To go along with that, he hit 47 home runs, and that was enough for him to earn the American League Most Valuable Player Award. According to ESPN.go.com, Gehrig had the, had the record for most grand slams in a career with 23, 
which wasn't broken until 75 years later by Alex Rodriguez, who beat it last year. And last but arguably the most important thing that he's most well known for is his consecutive game streak. He played in 2,130 consecutive games without missing one. That's almost 14 years. According to WashingtonPost.com, uh, Blue Gehrig's record stood until Cowork and Jr. broke it for 56 years when he played his 2,131st game in Baltimore. The reason Lou Gehrig's streak ended was because he contracted what's known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. It is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, because when he contracted it, it was so devastating at the time, because it ended his streak, ended his career, and ended his life <coughs> at a mere 30, 37 years old. But it, According to AthlonSports.com, if the Yankees were to have a Mount Rushmore of their own, both Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig would both be on it. Two of the greatest players of all time on the, great, on the same team at the same time was just intimidating for teams at times. But it wasn't just those two legends who led the Yankees to greatness. The team consisted of six Hall of Fame players. Of six Hall of Fame players. This, line, this legendary lineup of league leaders in almost every major batting category came to be known as the murderer's row, due to their ability to murder anything opposing pitchers threw at them. They also dominated on the opposite side of the ball. With their pitching, they, led, they were led by starting pitchers Wake Hoyt, Herb <coughs> Panic, George Pipgrass, and relief pitcher Will C. Moore. And according to BleacherReport.com, the 1927 Yankees pitching staff had stood the test of time, still ranking as one of the best of all time. They led the American League in the most important pitching statistics, lending up the fewest runs and hits for the entire season. The 1927 New York Yankees team was one of the most dominating teams of all time because of their all-around excellence in every aspect of the game. They had by far the greatest offense ball of the time, just demolishing their opponents, while also boasting the best pitching staff in the league. They hardly had any weaknesses, and opposing teams dreaded playing them. The 1927 Yankees team made it cool to be a Yankee. They started a tradition, of, a tradition of excellence and demanded the best from their players. The 1927 New York Yankee team will forever go down in history as a benchmark for great teams. speech was obviously about the Yankees. Um, the thesis statement I heard was you wanted to spotlight the dominance of the 1927 Yankees. Uh, and it was very clear um, what you were trying to say about it. Um, the only thing was, I think you put the preview before the thesis, because I heard you say something about, oh, I want to talk about the teams and the individual achievements, and then I heard your thesis. Um, so that just confused me a little bit. Um, but it was still very clear what you were trying to say. Um, two strong points. Uh, you had very clearly like marked when you were switching points. You, you would say, now we're going to talk about the teams, and this was Babe Ruth and then Lou Gehrig. Um, they were very clear and decisive of when you were going, so we could kind of transition with you. Um, and you had, your, all of your information was very well categorized. Um, you didn't I don't know, shuffle between things all the time. You kind of like, you went through and listed everything until you got to the next point. Uh, things you could improve on, you, you were kind of doing the whole shuffling thing with the cards a little bit. Um, it was, it was kind of distracting to me. Uh, and 
the transitions, although the transitions were really good, they were still abrupt at times. Um, you would be talking and talking and talking, and then you would say, oh, now I'm going to talk about something else. So even though I knew you were switching points, I was still kind of in the mode of the original point. Um, the visual aids, I liked the, the statistics and everything you had. It was all very clear, and we could see all of the other scores as well, so we could just compare it in our heads. Um, the only problem is then, if we're looking at it and if we're comparing it in our heads, we're not paying as much attention to you. Um, so I like the visual aid, I just think it, it needed a little bit, I think you needed to be a little more punching like what you were trying to say during those parts. Uh, and I like the picture you had of Lou Gehrig, or that, that uh, baseball game. Uh, overall, I really liked it. Uh, it was really interesting to me. Um, I, I knew about the whole Lou Gehrig thing, but I didn't know exactly what it was, so that was interesting to me. Um, overall, yeah, it was a good presentation. All right. Uh, I would echo almost everything Nick said. I thought that there, there was you know, a very solid opening, uh, very clear identification of the topic. I did notice that it seemed like the purpose statement appeared in a couple of places, including after the, the, the preview. Uh, it was maybe a little bit sharper after the preview. We knew what, where you were going from the beginning, so I didn't think that that was a big issue. Just a, just a little bit of a a difference, that's all, and perhaps one that uh, isn't a problem, uh, just not one that was expected. I thought that everything started off really well when it came to organization. And in the second half of the speech, I didn't think that the transitions were as clear, and um, you know, a after you got past uh, Ruth and Gehrig, uh, things, I won't say they collapsed, but they were a little bit less distinct than they had been uh, before that. So. Uh, th those are minor quibbles, by the way. That doesn't mean that there was a problem with it. That just meant that it wasn't as sharp as it had been earlier. Uh, I, I don't know that the visual criticism that Nick uh, made is really all that problematic. I, th I do think he might be right that you could highlight those uh, things in the, uh, in the, the table charts that we're looking at a little bit more and maybe punch on a couple of things, but I thought it was very clear I, when you said, look, you know, he hit 60 home runs, that's more than any other team hit in the league. That's exactly the kind of point that you want to do. And I think the same sort of thing that I was just talking about with Jake, the delivery needs to punch things a little bit here and there. We haven't been heavily emphasizing that, but you've got great information. Uh, I, I thought that you had like a little bit of a, a nice emotional start with the story about your father and being a Yankee fan, and we need to get that a little bit more as you're going along, you know, like, damn, this team is killer. You, know, you look at them and it's hard to, how'd you like to be playing against this team kind of stuff? You know, it's something that, that makes it a little bit more invigorating instead of just the kind of the dry run through the material. Not that I thought it was dry, because I thought you did a good job on that. Just something to add to it. That's all we're talking about. Let's get some frosting on top of the cake. All right, thank you.